please nothing. Good evening, Salam Sejahtera, Unitanians. Hello to all Unitan students, Unitan staff, Unitan lecturers, and also maybe some of you are not Unitan students, but you're logging in to join us for today's special event. Welcome once again to another episode of Lighthouse brought to you by the Student Guidance Unit at University Tenaga National, also known as Unitan. Hi, I'm your host today, and my name is Jason. And like House, we have been around for a few months. Today, if I'm not wrong, is our 17th or 18th episode. You might not be aware that we are a few months old, but we are here to stay. The purpose of Lighthouse coming live every Friday, 9 p.m. for sure is just with one mission, which is to help undergraduate students and postgraduate students like yourself who belongs to the Uni 10 family to lead you to a better path through sharing of latest, accurate, meaningful and useful information regarding few things, mental health, personal growth, psychology, so that you can learn and together we can move and improve yourself to be the best version of you, Uni Tenians. Tonight, it's my great pleasure to have one of our colleague, trainee counsellor, Maisara Mohammad, who is passionate, creative, compassionate. And one more thing, I like her because she is patient. Patience is very important virtue when you counsel and guide a student who is feeling stressed or overwhelmed with the challenges they have on hand. Maisara is my colleague, uh, we have known each other for a few weeks and I feel that she is a good counsellor. Why? Because she has one characteristic, which is creativity. I call her the creative counsellor. When we are stuck, you need creativity. When a student are, or the client are stuck, the counsellor needs to have creativity brought into the discussion to help the client see another side of the issue. Without any delay, I would like to invite our speaker tonight, Mai Sara, to come into the room. Hi, everybody. Hi. How are you going? Good evening. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Mai. I'm Good sure evening. you are excited. Wow. You said you are a bit nervous. I'm sure you are more excited I than do. nervous right I now am. to share the topic that is close to your heart regarding rape culture. Rape culture. Yes, Without correct. any more delay, I'll hand over the whole stage to you, my Sarah. Thank you, Jason. So again, hi, everybody. So as Jason has introduced me to you, again, I'm Mai. Okay, you can call me Mai Sarah. I'm the training counselor from um, Student Guidance Unit, Unit 10. Okay, so for tonight, I have chosen to talk about rape culture. Okay, let me share my screen first. There you go. Okay, rape culture. All right. So f there are a couple of things that I want to uh, remind you of that. Okay, first of all, I'm not an expert. So the reason that I'm choosing this topic because it caught my interest. I am, I'm here to advocate um, to this cause. Okay. And also because... Um, this topic has not been very well known to the people. I guess it's not just widespread as widespread as when, uh, like mental health. You know, back in the days when people mentioned about mental health, mental mental health has been stigmatized before this. But now people are getting more awareness on mental health in general. So I hope that one day this kind of topic also um, get more attention and more people are more aware of this thing happening uh, in our society. Um, and also another thing that 
So because we are talking about this, so I'm going to be transparent on the words that I will be using. Okay. All right. So let's introduce to what is this rape culture. So what is rape culture? It is, um, so it is culture, right? So culture means a belief. So it's a complex set of belief that encourage male sexual aggression. Okay, so because this happened a lot, the victims, majority of the victims are females. Okay, so that's why um, we seen in the society, in the society, most of the male. Um, okay, um, but we don't deny that this happened. The victims are among the male as well. Okay, but in general, it rape culture is um, most encouraged uh, is something that encourages male sexual aggression, and it is whereby it support violence. Okay, against not just uh, to females but also uh, against children. So rape culture is also um, a sexual violence where it is seen as sexy. Um, and it normalized a rape culture. It normalized physical and emotional terrorism against child, children and women. And also, um, the uh, sexual violence is assumed as fact of life. It means that um, people look at it, sexual violence is something that they cannot run away from. It is something that's already inside our society. That's why you become a culture, right? So it, people look at it as if something inevitable. But it is sexual violence is not we are born with it, even though like human, we are human, we have the sexual urge, but sexual violence is not one of it. Okay. So we will continue to live in this rape culture until we stop looking sexual violence is something uh, looking at sexual violence as a fact of life all right so in order to understand more about rape culture we need to understand the terms within it so we're gonna look at um one by one one um the terms okay all right uh so the first one consent so consent means to give permission by saying yes Okay, it's only possible when someone uh, able to say um, yes or no without pressure. So it means consible, uh, consent is only possible when there is equal power. Both parties say yes. Um, so it is not a consent if it involves uh, a sense of fear. Uh, it's not a consent if also involve deception or manipulation. Um, and of course, if someone is asleep or unconscious, it is, um, it is also not equal to a consent. Okay, we are living in like, um, our society, uh, mainly uh, Muslim people, right? But we we must not be um, looking at um, to our society who other than Muslim people. So uh, what I'm trying to talk about is the about uh, the consumption of alcohol. So for example, like if there is a people, if someone, all right, um, take alcohol and then maybe like in a bar, for example, and someone, and maybe she, he or she left, uh, leave the drink unattended. So my bad, um, someone, or we call it as perpetrator, okay? The perps will like maybe spike the drink with drugs and then, um, uh, and then they can, uh, Okay, I'm sorry. All right, maybe my I become nervous, so it's a bit decluttered inside, um, a bit cluttered inside my mind. Okay, so what I'm trying to say about alcohol is that okay, 
when someone uh, is not in their right mind, okay, is not the an excuse for the perps, okay, to attack them, to rape them, okay, all right. It's not an excuse not obtaining consent. So this is what, what this is about. If someone is unconscious for maybe one of the reasons because of uh, they are drunk or they are drunk, uh, it's not an excuse for not obtaining consent. So consent is very important, okay? All right, thanks. The next term is harassment. Okay, sexual harassment. It means unwelcome sexual advances or request for sexual favors. So it is the part when um, people uh, give a hint or people, there is a verbal verbal harassment, there, there, there is physical harassment, there is a non-verbal harassment, there is a visual harassment. So this happened everywhere and because it's become a culture, right? Some people assume me as a joke, okay? But when the other person um, not feel uncomfortable with it, so this whereby the part is become a harassment. So harassment can happen anywhere. It can be at workplace, it can be at school it can be even at your at at home all right um okay let's look at the types of sexual harassment so what i have here is the example of written harassment physical harassment nonverbal harassment and visual harassment so let's look at the first one verbal or written harassment so harassment can be in terms of whereby one people um making a remarks, okay? They are giving a comment about how someone look, how people dress, okay? Maybe um, also they are making sexually explicit statement, okay? Uh, statements, questions, jokes, or it also can be like if someone's spreading rumors about someone's personal life or sexual life um, and also verbal, harassment can be in the form of excessive flirting. So if someone's trying to flirt with you and if there is a consensual, if it is consensual, then it is fine. But when the when someone tries to flirt with you and it is non-consensual and you feel uncomfortable and, and this is where it becomes an harassment, especially when it happens uh, many times over and over again. Okay, physical harassment um, we were talking about assault. Physical, in the context of sexual harassment, physical is more like a, just a normal touching, but you're making the other person not comfortable. All right? So it also, like, okay, here, it can also be inappropriate touching, um, eh, inappropriate touching such as kissing, hugging, stroking, rubbing, so these are all belong to physical harassment. Nonverbal is more to like your body languages, maybe body languages like the perp, the, the, the person, the offender, look you um, from somewhere far and then they uh, look at you um, up and down, okay? And also it can be like they stare at you with a offensive manner that is non-verbal and visual harassment is um, when, so mostly visual harassment is when people give you a picture, okay? Inappropriate images such as pornography, um, private parts. Um, it can be either through direct messages or it can be just um, through, even on the TV, Right? Okay. So that is harassment. Next term, assault. Assault is, okay, this is assault in general. Assault in general, it means behavior which are intended to cause pain or injury to a specific person is also 
uh, can be behavior intended to uh, cause in physical contact that is that is insulting or offensive to another to someone. Uh, it can also be um, an act which put another person in fear. Fear of immediate physical contact means maybe with the ability of the offender to carry a gun, a weapon, okay? Um, sexual assault. Sexual assault uh, means touching someone in non-consensual manner. So this one is whereby there is a sexual contact directly to the uh, intimate parts of the body, right? So it can be either um, when someone touch uh, someone's breath, um, but our inner thigh or genital areas, okay? Sexual assaults, direct contact to private parts of the body. Um, next is rape. All right. So rape is the part where someone forced to have sexual intercourse with them. So it's not just sexual intercourse. It can be oral or anal sex. Um, most importantly, it's against their will. And normally, people, when they force someone to have sex with them, they will threaten, that, threaten to harm the victim. It can also be that they tr threaten to harm the people close to the victim. Um, so when people rape, when offender rape, uh, ejaculation is not necessary. It means um, uh, the penetration, okay, no matter how slight, no matter how slight the penetration is, it is necessary to call it as a, an act of rape. So it, ejaculation is not necessary. So penetration may be, can be penetration penetration to the vagina, to mouth, or to the anus, can be by the penis, 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 and other part of the body. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Now let's talk about child sexual abuse. So child sexual abuse is the sexual exploitation or victimiz victimization of a child by either adult or adolescent or older child. Okay. Because of the difference in age, okay, and sexual knowledge between child and older people, it makes the consent is consent to sexual activity is impossible. Okay. So, so it not necessarily involving force because most of the time children in child sexual abuse children are bright uh, or verbally persuaded to sexual acts. So it's beyond their knowledge, okay? It doesn't require force. So sexual abuse to children um, include a range of behaviors such as um, penetration through vagina, anal, oral. It can be fondling, whereby the perps, perps perpetrator stroke or carries um, erotically to the private parts, either the private part of the perps themselves or the private part of the children. It can be in the form of exhibitionism, okay? It means the extravagant behavior that is attended to attract attention to oneself. It can be in term, uh, in a form of prostitution and photographing a child for pornography. So these are some examples of how child sex sexual abuse looks like. All right. Moving on, grooming. All right, grooming. What is grooming? 
So grooming means when someone build relationship, befriending, uh, building trust, establishing an emotional connection with, it can be either a child, it can be anybody, okay? So why they do this? They want to lower the victim's inhibitions of sexual abuse. So they want to lower down their inhibition towards sexual abuse, okay? So they start by de developing the trust, building the connection, emotional connection, building the trust. Mm. Yeah, normally this, uh, the offender, the, the, the perpetrator will manipulate victim. They will exploit the trust. And at the final stage, they will abuse the trust by forcing them to do sexual activity. Um, okay, I have here uh, like um, the stages of how someone uh, might be groomed. Okay, the grooming line. So the first stage is targeting stage. The targeting stage whereby the perpetrator will... Um, find look at a specific person uh, will find a specific victim okay normally they will target vulnerable people such as children child uh, it can be someone who uh, children from a divorce uh, broken family it can be someone who from poor family so they will give giving them give money okay Someone who's vulnerable, who needs something in their life. So, and then when they are found, they are victim, they will start to the next stage, friendship forming stage. So what is this friendship forming stage? So this is whereby they will try to establish secrecy. So what does it mean secrecy? Because... Um, they want to make sure they're building the trust, right? So, okay, to ensure the secrecy, this, why secrecy? Secrecy, they want to make sure that their activity is secret, all right? Nobody found out their intention, their uh, vision of um, trapping this victim. So, how the friendship is formed, they will make sure they fulfill the victim's need. They will provide uh, some kind of comfort, and then um, maybe like if it happens on the social media, maybe they look at your profile, uh, the victim's profile and look at what are their interests. And then the place, maybe the place that they hang out at. All right. So they make the victim feel special and fulfill their needs, provide something that is value to them, make the victim feel like, Oh, this person care for me, all right? And when the trust is built, so they will move to the loving relationship step, uh, stage. So that all of these stages, um, the, uh, there are two, uh, two things that they, the perpetrator want to make sure that they want to maintain that all of the stages are being kept secret. Okay, they want to maintain the secrecy and they want to make sure that um, the victim is alone, always alone when they're doing their activity together. So, okay, the third stage, loving relationship stage. Um, this is when they try to dis the perpetrator try to desensitize the victim to the sexual nature of relationship. Means they will start to send um like uh pictures, okay, sending pictures, slowly lowering the inhibition, their inhibition, so that when they At this stage, um, because they're starting to lowering, how to say, 
um, because they are slowly started to give pictures maybe and they're introduced to um, how how to do sex uh, how to do sex um, so because uh, the victim already like it's like a contract you know like they're already dependent on that person so they have no way to go and then um, it's hard for the victim to resist at this stage, loving relationship stage. Um, so normally at this stage, uh, not not this stage. Normally, the the victim. Okay, normally the victim they. Okay, let's go to the next, the, the final stage, abusive relationship. So how abusive relationship stage uh, happen is, is when they keep forcing, I mean, they threaten the victim, right? They threaten the victim to maintain the power because all of this idea is them, the perpetrator in the control has the power. So they want to, the perpetrator always like what I said just now, they want to maintain the power control and secrecy. So to ensure this, they will keep uh, threatening either in the form of uh, withdrawing the gift that they give to the victim or maybe scaring them to break the relationship or maybe scare the victim by telling that if I go to jail, then you will go to jail as well. You, if I am in trouble, you will be in trouble as well. So this is where, but th this is how abusive relationship stage looks like. So normally, uh, perpetrator they are very get very good at manipulation, and they will try anything so that people won't know, and also the victim will would wouldn't tell anybody. Okay. I keep mentioning the word perpetrator. So perps of perps for short is the person who did all this kind of activity, harassment, assault, rape, grooming. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's look at the how it looks like rape culture in Malaysia. So is there a simple um, example I have here? So maybe like at workplace. So maybe some of you have seen this. So this is our international diver, Pandelela Rinong. So recently, like a month ago, she shared about this story of where she experienced sexual harassment by her coach. Okay. She said that, um, so this is seven years ago, like her coach keep making like, um, what do you call it? jokes? Sexual jokes, yeah. Se sexual jokes. And she doesn't feel comfortable about it. And she tried to um, tell the coach about how she feel. But then uh, she was attacked again by another sexual joke. Um yeah, so this is what Pandelela Rinong has shared uh, about her experience being harassed. Um, so you can read more on her Twitter. Uh, and next is at school. So I also believe that this has been viral. So this is Ayn's story. Mm. Let's look at here her video, shall we? Let me stop my. I'm gonna share Ayn's story, okay? So I is someone who stand up to the social media and share about how the male teacher at her school making rape joke. Okay, wait. Um, 
going good, you know. We were talking about, about sexual harassment. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Well, I came home from school and today in class, we were learning PJK with this male teacher. Going good, you know. We were talking about sexual harassment and how to take care of yourself, your body right. We were making a couple of jokes, but it seemed normal at first. But slowly, the jokes were getting weirder and more lucha. Then, we were talking about how there's a lot of laws protecting minors from sexual abuse or sexual harassment. And then he said, guess what? Kalau nanti korang ada rogol, janganlah rogol yang bawah 18. Korang rogol yang atas 18. He really said that. And the girls were like quiet. But the, the boys, oh, they were laughing. Like, it was so funny to joke about rogol. About raping someone. He even talked about how that apparently, kalau boys kena rape, it doesn't get reported because the boys is apparently sedap or it feels good for them. Like, what kind of... So much more that I want to say, but time is running out, so... So I just came home from school and today in class, we were learning... Yeah, that's about Ayn. And I believe some of you have seen the video, have been following um her story. Some of you might not, so... This case, I mean, it has been into, it has been brought into the makama. Uh, what do you call makama? Uh, into makama, and I forgot like who wins, either the teacher wins or I win. Maybe some of you can share uh, whether who wins. I don't remember on the allegation of the male teacher's uh, harassment toward her. Um, so yeah, and it's not just happened to Ain. I mean, like Ain is one of the person, um, who like share with all of us. But actually, the this kind of story is everywhere. Many people, many students are afraid to share because of many reasons, which I will share later on. Okay, um. So this is uh, like uh, stats from 2019 whereby, so this is uh, the, what has been reported. So we doesn't know the exact number because some might be shame of what happened so they don't report. But so far the statistic that we have is 36% of women, 17% of men experience sexual harassment. <laughs> Um, and yeah, just like he said here, men are li less likely to report an incident of sexual harassment compared to 57% because it's, there is still a stigma towards men who got harassed. So less men. See, there's a statistic here says 54% because of embar embarrassment. Why survivor do not make a report? And also 30% of victims feel that no one will do anything about the problem. So this is what we are dealing with today. Many people are scared. So that's why we need to have more and more awareness so that people feel they are not alone. Okay. All right. Um, all right. There are laws on rape and sexual assault. Okay, so in, under the Malaysian law, rape means sex intercourse with a woman. So this is like within the Malaysian law, how it defines rape. 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 So it means sex, sex with a woman against her will without her consent. So it is considered as rape. Um, uh, if the consent obtained is putting her in a fear of death or hurt. Uh, if the consent is obtained because of authority, maybe like someone who is like maybe boss, okay, like maybe father, okay, that is mean by the authority. Um, it also considered as rape, rape if consent obtained if the person, uh, the victim doesn't understand um, to the consequence of what she is consenting to. So this is apply 
maybe like uh, maybe family members who didn't know the intention of the perpetrator or maybe children. So normally children, they don't understand like the consequence of what they consent to. All right, children. So for girl under 16 years old, with or without her consent is also a rape. Okay. Okay. Punishment for rape under penal code section 376. So this is like the punishments. Okay. So you can read this up. So I'm not an expert of law. So I will avoid myself from explaining this, but so you can read from here, all right? Punishment for it, based according to our Malaysian law. Um, so there's also capital punishment. Uh, if capital punishment between 15 to 30, uh, or imprisonment for a term between 15 to 30 years with whipping no less than 10 stroke can be imposed on the rapist who caused the death of Roman. So if the rapist kill the victim, so capital punishment can be executed. Okay. Let's move on to the form of sexual assault cover. So this is an extension of the law. So I'll give you one minute to screen to to screen this um, type of offenses and punishments given to these offenses. Okay, so there are many actually, which is a good thing. But because of the stigma, many are afraid to come up front and report. But what happened? But it's a good thing that actually we have laws on. It's great. But it's very difficult when people making reports because, because they need evidence. So evidence is the tricky part. Okay, uh, before we got to the tricky part, why it is difficult to get the evidence, why it is difficult to get justice for the victim. Let's look at how the process for victim to gain justice. So first, they will make a report. Um, this is like a brief, okay? A brief how victims can uh, go make a report. Police will investigate the case. Um, So investigation officer, they will open a, uh, the case based on the report you have made. So basically the IO, IO investigation officer, they will interview the victim, the suspect, and maybe they will uh, call you again to give further statement. So it depends on the evidence. If the evidence is sufficient, the I.O. can bring the case to the deputy public prosecutor. So this prosecutor will determine whether there will be a case to charge against the perp or not. Okay, so that's why evidence is very important. If there's not insufficient evidence, if there is insufficient evidence, so the case, the case will be closed. All right. So if enough evidence can charge the case and then it get it go the, the there will be trial at the court. So many um details. Um I get this information from uh, the NGOs who advocate for sexual victims. Um I will share with you. Uh, the, the, the NGOs, NGO, NGOs who advocates for this cause. Uh, all right. Okay, talking about the evidence. 
Okay, you want to make sure you have enough evidence. So, the people who assaulted or the, the, the victim who got raped, you want to make sure that you avoid doing this thing, okay? Like showering, bathing, using the restroom, changing clothes, combing hair, cleaning up the area. Cleaning up means the private area, your, the private part of the body, okay? Because we have the DNA of the perps, okay, on your body. You don't want to destroy it. So this is the best thing to avoid if it is possible. Okay, but um, it's still possible to get medical uh, medical checkup even though you did all of this. Yeah, never give up. Okay, all right. So after you have all the, the evidence on your body, the DNA, you don't get showered, you don't go to the restroom. So is this possible to go ASAP to One Stop Crisis Center? So this is at the government hospital. They have this One Stop Crisis Center, but not all government hospitals. There's a list of government, government hospitals who have this center. Okay, so from there, you can receive medical treatment, uh, emergency contraceptive. So this is the services they offer okay, for those who are affected. And you can also make a police report directly at the center. The NA evidence need to be collected within seven to 72 hours in order to be analyzed by forensics. So that's why you need uh, people, the victim needs to go to the hospital as soon as possible because this is the crucial, the critical time where forensics can collect the DNA evidence. Okay, and the website that I'm referring to, they provide this information and they also said that clothes will be packed in bags provided by hospital, bring some spare. So bring some spare so, because the clothes that you're wearing at the moment will be um, collected by the forensic. So bring some spares. And of course, seek for counseling. If you have family members and friends, go to them. Um, yeah, seek counseling with them. I mean, not counseling, like seek support and help from them. But you feel if you feel like you don't have anyone to go to, uh, One Stop Crisis Center provide counseling. They have follow up. Um, what do you call that? The follow up thing after you re you go to the hospital. So they will make a follow up with you. But there are also other NGOs that can help you to provide counseling. So this is the NGOs among the popular one. I have two here. So this is where like uh, some of the impo information that I share with you, I got it from here. So first is All Women Action Society. So they provide, um, and uh, for for sure it's awam. So awam they provide, uh, they provide uh, counseling, free counseling services. They also provide legal information. So everything you want to know about um, us about rape culture, you can log in here. Uh, why don't we open this? website let's take a tour okay um share screen chrome tab so this is website of all women's actions society hope you can see all right so this so they have this hotline operated uh, during the day is called Telenita helpline so you can call to them if you need counseling counseling services um so they have these services legal remedy legal remedy so they provide information about rape gang rape incest sexual assault sexual harassment in the workplace if you're experiencing experiencing harassment at work Okay, so much resources here. 
you can look for, you can look up to. And the other website is, the other organization is Women's Aid Organization. Okay, let's take a quick look at that one. So this is a women's aid organization. So this one, they provide 24 hours hotline. So you can call them anytime. All right. So they, they also focus on domestic violence. Okay. People who are in abuse relationship, um, regardless of the partner of, um, of or children. So you have this information, what is rape? What to do after rape or sexual assault? The laws on rape and sexual assault. So everything that you need to know, you can get it here. So both of these organization, they are uh, located in PJ, Petaling Jaya. Okay, all right. All right, I have one last thing that i am e very looking forward to with you which is hold on so before before i do this talk in the post in our facebook page uh, say that i will be telling you about the myth and the fact but i'm Thing I want to do like true or false, okay, uh, a such a, like a kind of game, okay, true or false. So let's look at the first one. So I want you to join this if you want to join, okay, all right. Just telling like whether it's true or false. So first one, rape is an expression of passion and lust. Is it true or false? I don't know how to look at your comments. Um, can I? True or false? Anybody? All right, moving on. So it is false. It's not an expression of passion and lust. But in fact, rape is a crime of power and control. It is sexualized violence. Okay. The major motive for sexual assault or rape is to overpower and to control another person using sex as a weapon. So it's a false. Rape is impulsive, uncontrollable act of sexual gratification. True or false? Correct, it is false. So I can see um, some of the audience interact in the comment section. That is very good, thank you. Uh, so it is false, correct. Most rape, it is false. It is not uncontrollable act. Um, rape most often are planned and motivated. Okay, um, yeah, most of it are planned and motivated by aggression, dominance, hatred, and most offenders have access to consensual sex. That's a fact. Okay, moving on. Rapists hide in dark alleys and bushes waiting to attack the victim at night. True or false? It is false, okay. In fact, rapist can be someone is very close to the victim. It can be a friend, it can be your colleague, it can be your family member, it can be your acquaintance, anybody. And it can occur anytime, not during the night. It can occur any hour of the day. All right. And most often rape happen at home. Would you agree? All right. So, next, rape happens anytime. Rape happens anytime, correct? 
it's not rape if the people involved knew each other. It is not rape if the people involved knew each other. True or false? The answer to this is false. Okay. Even though you know that person, it is still considered as rape if the if it is a forced sex. Okay. Um, so sexual assault can be committed within any type of relationship, including in marriage, whether people are dating, um, among friends, just like I said just now, colleagues. Okay. Unwanted sexual activity is still sexual assault, is still a rape. Okay, moving on. There is such thing as rape between married couple. True or false? There is such thing as rape between married couples. The answer is true. Okay, four sets within marriage is rape. Okay, marital rape is often a final violent, violent act following a, a, a fight. Or oh, maybe uh, something like fight, battering incident. Okay. Sexual assault is not provoked by the victim's provocative dress dress of flirting. True or false? Something can be tricky, this question. It's not not provoke. Yes, correct. True. True. All right. So rape is not based because it's the victim is not the one to be blamed with. Okay. No one ever asked to be raped. There is no action or dress that give one person the right to violate another person. Okay, next. A person who is raped deserves it. False, right? No one deserves to be raped. It is difficult for sexual assault victims to report the crime immediately to the police. True or false? What do you think? Okay, maybe, yes, true. It is true. It is difficult because there are so many reasons. So I'm going to share with you some of the reasons why it is difficult for victims to report. First of all, it is, it is not easy to talk about being sexual, being raped, being sexually assaulted. Okay, the reason for not reporting, it can be that the victim will relieve the trauma. So they will, it's a traumatic experience, they relieve the trauma. It can be that they feel that people won't believe them. It can be that maybe someone will put it on the news, make rumors, spread the news. I mean, I will gossip, right? Um, it can be that after they report it and then the kids get into the court, um, they will be re-victimized, re re-victimized, okay? So they're being blamed because being the case to the court. Um, it can be that the victim want to forget what happened, so they just move on from what happened. Or it can, uh, it can be that they are in short, shock, S-H-O-C-K, shock. It can be that they not recognize what happened was sexual ass assault. Okay, so this happened mostly to the children. They don't know that it was a rape. There was a sexual assault. They are confused. Okay, so a victim is likely to report sexual assault by a friend or relative. So because of this uh, relationship, they have maybe the family members who did the crime. So they are afraid to report it because it's their family, their relative. It was not rape if she or he didn't fight back. True or false? So the answer is false. So um, 
lack of resistance is not uncommon. It's not uncommon. It means it's, it's common. People cannot resist. So it's still a rape. Maybe sometimes because they they didn't fight back because they don't want to they want to die. They are threatened to be killed. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and many other uh threatening that they would receive. Okay. So it's still a rape, even though they didn't fight. So it's false. Men can be raped. True or false? The answer is true, but I forgot to edit this. The answer is true. Okay, men can be raped. True. Men can be overpowered, forced, um, yeah, tricked into sexual activity. So men can be sexual harassed too. So in form of verbal gestures, them of visual, it's just the same for everybody, regardless of gender, gender identity. Okay. And okay, I have two more. Anyone can prevent a sexual assault. True or false. So it's actually False. Okay, again, I also forgot to edit this one. So it's false. Anyone, no one can be forced to have sex, okay? So because rape is a force, force, uh, it is a forced sex, so nobody can prevent it. All right, last but not least, it is okay to have thoughts about raping people. It's okay or not? It's okay to have thoughts about raping people. Yes, false. Okay. And because it's the last one, I also forgot to edit. So it's false. It is not okay. It, we are not like animals. We are human. We are evolving and we have the sense of empathy. We learn how to be... Um, good how to be kind to other people okay um so a little two couple of things that i would like to share like we have to stop normalizing because we are talking about these thoughts right having thoughts raping people having sexual fantasy so we have to stop normalizing call it a fantasy because why should rape be a fantasy? Okay. So it's very, very, very tough thing that we are dealing today. So, yeah. I am very grateful that everybody are watching this until here. Because we have come to the end. So, um, yeah, because we only have five, uh, five minutes left. I'm welcome. Any question for me now? Maybe Jason can come back into the picture and share a question that our audience have. Hi, Jason. Hi, my wow, that was a very, very extensive the ending. Yep, we yeah, don't have much time left, but we are yeah. very glad to have all those engagements in the quiz just now. And yeah, I do have one question from one of the audience member. It's back to something that you shared about grooming, sexual grooming on the internet, which is a very important knowledge, in my opinion. So the question goes like this My, what are the signs that myself or a person is being groomed okay there is a thank you for the question okay 
uh, grooming. All right. So how do you know if you want if you are being groomed by someone? So first thing you want to look at the things that they give to you, they are offering to you. Okay. Uh, maybe they give in in the form of gift. They give in the form of comfort. So normally they will like very nice in term of using their words and uh, normally they will make sure that you are alone. So this is one thing. They will, um, alone means they will make sure that you, there's nobody there. Okay, what I'm trying to say is like, um, when you are contacting this person, right, you are you you will know whether you where you at at the moment, whether you are alone or you with other people. So if you feel like you're with other people, then you can tell you can you should share the story. If you feel like you keep contacting this person uh, when you are alone, so this is like one one sign, one sign of red flag one red flag sign um if is another way to look at it if you're starting to lie to people sometimes you want to uh you don't want to tell people like you're contacting this person okay uh you're starting to lying so it's another uh another another sign okay that you are being groomed um yeah obviously when they start to get you into something sexually so that is another sign i guess that's the three thing secrecy lying to people if you feel like you're lying to people if you feel like you keep this thing secret and these people keep like uh comforting you uh care for you in a diluk macam dengan cara yang macam Pelik. Uh, so, some of the sign. That's what I think I can, yeah, what I have. The information that I have with me that I can share with you all. My, I have a curious question. This is from me. Based on mm -hmm. what you shared just now, it, it, let's say if I suspect, let's say I suspect that I'm being groomed by okay. somebody, okay. what can I do? I suspect already that I'm in, being groomed by someone. What can I do to either stop it or prevent it? That's a very good question. Thank you, Jason. Okay, if you, it means that you are starting to aware that, okay, this person is being suspicious, something like that, right? Mm, of grooming me. Yeah, okay. So, of, I think... If you can do this, obviously stop contacting this person. But if you feel like you are have some kind of contract, like you cannot turn off the, the relationship, you um if you have someone that you can share story with, your friends or family, go to them. But if you feel like you are at the like you don't have anywhere to go, then seek for someone you, I mean, someone you can trust, which is seek for counseling. Okay. So counselors, counselor is everywhere. We, you can find many free counseling services. Um, from the organization that I shared with you just now, also here, we in SDU also provide counseling, free counseling services. You can just, Hit us up. We have our contact numbers in our page. Um, yeah, counseling is very important. If you feel like you have nowhere to go, seek for a counselor. If you have family and friends that you can tell your stories to, go to them. And obviously, stop contacting that person. That's all. They, they cannot harm you. They cannot harm you, okay? They make you scared to their words. Yeah, that's my answer. Thank you so much. That is very helpful. All right, I'm checking time, although we are still ongoing and you still have energy. But 
It's 10.04 already and we started on the dot at 9 p.m. Thank you so much to our speaker tonight, Maisara, who is also a trainee counsellor at Student Guidance Unit. We are located at level 3 of the CES building. And Thank you yes, for having this, me tonight. No problem. For the audience, this show is brought, brought to you by Student Guidance Unit. It's now known as Lighthouse. Why we name it Lighthouse? For one simple reason. It's because we, counsellors and trainee counsellors at SGU, Student Guidance Unit, are practically your guiding light. We are practically shining a light for you to walk the path, especially when you're feeling down, when you're feeling lost, and when you do not know what to do. So, feel free, come and visit us, and most importantly, follow our Facebook page to, to be notified of all the upcoming activities and events. Every single Friday, 9 p.m., without fail so far, we'll be live to bring you interesting, accurate, and latest information so that you can make better decisions, you can grow personally, and most importantly, you are at your best self when you are studying at University Tanaga National. With that, I would like to thank our speaker, Maisara, for the great sharing session, very extensive, very important, and also call it a night. Thank you to the audience. Thank you once again for staying until this time and all your comments answering the quiz. It's appreciated to the max. Look forward you, to see you Good at night. the next episode of Lighthouse. Yeah, next episode is especially targeted to those in your final year. We are going to talk about how to attain career success. So if you are a Unitech student in your final year, looking forward to get a good job and be successful at the job, tune in next Friday, 9 p.m. With that, signing off, Jason here together with Maisara and saying stay safe, still stay safe and good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.